Rick Reader, let's turn back to you on this data and how to push it through this market as well. What does this mean for this bond market for the months ahead of us? So it means a couple of things. I think the interpretation is going to be the Fed can stay on uh, on hold longer, which, uh, quite frankly, I don't. I, I don't actually think they need to. I, I actually don't think that putting liquidity into the system in the front end of the yield curve largely will do has any correlation with jobs. But the, clearly, the bond market is going to reflect that they're going to be willing to stay on hold for a while. So we're going to be in a low rate environment for a while. The other thing that is going to continue to accelerate is this dynamic that we overheat and this dynamic that inflation is going to accelerate higher because you've got a Fed that's going to stay, stay on hold longer. Listen, I think a lot of people are going to <clears throat> look at this number and say, gosh, there, there's a lot of error factor to this. But you're going to have a Fed that's going to keep going. So that overheat narrative that I hear every call I'm on with clients will continue to persist. Rick, you said that they shouldn't carry on with this. Do you think they will? Uh, so, I mean, it's, it's pretty clear that they don't want it to move from emergency conditions and don't want to move in terms of tapering down the liquidity. Listen, I mean, we could talk uh, for too long about, you know, the impact that that'll have in terms of quality assets, that you're pressing real rates too low, you're pressing uh, the, the bid for high-quality assets, the fixing of market is so crazy high at this point. It's in the banks are, are obviously getting huge amounts of deposits that have to be recirculated. Anyway, I think the, uh, uh, I'm not sure they're going to change the policy, certainly given this number, but I'm not sure the benefit for doing it is, uh, is, is well, I'm certain it's not worth it, actually.